Next up, the chief economist from the Brewers Association, Mr. Bart Watson. He comes packing. Yeah, I have, have a, a I have a feeling this is going to be the trend today. Is that everybody's going to come up with a beer? I mean, when you're at a beer conference, you know. Yeah, so it's only tw it's, it's twelve noon. twelve thirty, and I got two in front of me. Um, well, no, I'll leave a third if you need a third there. Oh well, nice thank you. Times. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so how'd the presentation go this morning? I caught some slides from my colleague Justin, who's off screen right now. Uh, look like some pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, hopefully the attendees got a lot out of it. Um, you know, obviously the industry is a little more challenged than it used to be, so it's maybe a little bit less fun presenting news that's more mixed than it was in the past than when it was all positive. But uh, yeah, hopefully there were some good takeaways that people can take back to their breweries. What do you think is maybe the most important data point that you shared today? You know, I, I think some of the stuff on how distribution's changing and, and making sure that people have realistic expectations of what their brand can achieve in distribution, both because distributors are crowded um, and because just growth has changed. That, you know, people, they're, they're drinking local. They're not, you know, drinking as far away from home. And, and so people need to have realistic expectations of what they're going to be able to do going forward. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about this a little bit with Joe, uh, but at the very end of July, the Brewers Association reported growth for U.S. craft brewers about 5% midway through the year. Now that you've had a couple extra months to look at some IRI data and maybe you got some, some of those surveys, some additional surveys back, do you still project 5% growth for the rest of the year? You know, I think it could notch down one, you know, one tick. Um, I still think that's a good mid-year estimate and where we were. Uh, you know, one thing we're still waiting on is uh, TTB second quarter number. Um, so much of that growth is being driven by the tail now, those smallest breweries. I mean, we saw it last year that, you know, 900,000 of the 1.2 million barrels were from breweries that were in the last three years. And a lot of that's not showing up in IRI or Nielsen anymore. So once we get that TTB premise use number for the second quarter, I think we'll have a, a tight estimate but I still think that's about where it is you know we're gonna see probably a little bit more than a million barrels of growth again and and that'll fall somewhere in the you know four to five to six percent range how much harder is your job now that there are seven thousand breweries and there's all these direct sales and you know it's not getting captured in IRI I, you know it's certainly a lot harder and you know we've seen that where the craft growth number and the IRI number just don't track as well yeah um, you know it it makes my job more fun because you know there's more rabbit holes to dive down but it, it's certainly hard work and you know we're gonna see we're gonna see it go up and notch two as brewery closings move up, just tracking it all is going to be harder and, and that's going to become a bigger piece of the story. So um, you don't get into this if you don't like, you know, kind of chasing the data. So I, I won't say it's become less fun. It's just become different and harder. Yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah. Um, all right. So you, you mentioned a, a whole bunch of things there that I want to kind yeah, of pick let's through. Unpack. Um, so let's unpack some of that. You, you talked about uh, just the, the growth that's coming from that quote unquote long tail. And I think when you guys reported uh, the mid-year growth numbers, you took a little bit deeper dive and, and you looked at the IRI data and you showed that uh, basically if you're selling fewer than 100,000 cases, you're in a pretty good spot. And if you're selling fewer than 10,000 cases at off-premise retail, I mean, you're in a really good spot. Um, talk to me about just sort of the, the long-term potential for that piece of the market and whether or not you expect consumers to continue gravitating towards those more smaller regionalized brands. Yeah, well, you know, I, I do think it's worth noting too that, that those averages can lie, you know, uh, lies, lies and damn statistics. Um, so, you know, there's still a lot of variation within that too. So you can have 60% growth from the tail and there's still companies that are struggling. So right. just because you're small doesn't mean you're in a good spot. You still got to have great beer. You still got to have a strategy. And if you're scattering it all over the country, you're probably in a lot of trouble. If you're in your local market, you're probably doing well. Um, you know, I think there's still run room. I mean, we see that there's a lot of markets where that in-state brewer share still isn't as high as it is in some of the leading states. Um, you know, I think this trend toward localization isn't going anywhere. Um, you know, quality still is king, but there's a lot of quality local beer. And so when you've got a jump ball between a local brewer and an out-of-state brewer, clearly consumers are picking that, that local brewer. Um, and so I think we're going to see this deepen. At some point, you know, retail and distribution push back. We're already seeing that. They don't want a million brands in, in every market. Right. Um, so it can't continue forever in that, you know, they still want velocity drivers. They still want people who are going to move some volume. But, you know, I think we're going to see at least a couple more years of this. And, you know, brewers that are right-sized to do that are going to be able to take opportunity. Brewers that built up and, you know, expected widespread growth, you know, may still have challenges. Now, are these local brands gaining share for themselves at the expense of other craft brewers or... Are they still, 
you know, taking away from the more mainstream brands, Bud Miller Coors? It's a mix. Um, you know, I think, you know, a couple of years ago, you could point, it was it was Jim Cook's Leaky Bucket. It was, you know, yep. falling out of the large brewers. Um, now I think it's, it's more of a mix. And, you know, you can see some of the struggles from, you know, many of the regionals, particularly the ones that are nationally distributed, I think are directly you know, related to this, that the, the tail is taking some of their share as well. Um, so it, it's not one or the other, but it's it's clearly some of it is is craft on craft competition now. Yeah, I mean, last two years, I think the top fifty list that you guys put out, uh, half of the brands in the top fifty were flat or down in, in both of the last mm -hmm. two years. Do you expect uh, similar numbers this year? I mean, it seems like those those companies are just incredibly challenged. Yeah, I, I think it is going to be similar this year. You know, if you don't have a, a new hot brand, I mean, there's lots of companies that are still succeeding. I mean, Dogfish Head's having a great year. Fucking and, trends. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, they've got they've got Sequench and it's you know it's flying. You know, Sierra seems like a, you know you just had Joe on. I'm sure he talked about Hazy Little Thing and you know it seems like it's doing great and great out of the blocks for them. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it is going to be similar this year that um, you know particularly in that regional space. You just do the back of the envelope math, and there's just not a lot of room for them all to grow the way they were a few years ago. Um, so we're already hearing some of them, though, are doing better as they right-size that distribution. So they pull back, they give up some of the areas where they were shedding a lot of volume, yep. and they start to rebuild in that core. And, and so at mid-year, I heard a lot of stories like that from regional brewers where I'm up 15% in my local markets, I'm down 10% in other markets, and overall it's starting to balance out a little bit more. Now, as that happens, and we're, we've seen, obviously, the big headlines about this uh, from some of the larger players, mm -hmm. but... I've heard anecdotally stories from you know much much smaller breweries, uh, a lot of layoffs, mm -hmm. and um, I'm sort of curious if you guys are tracking uh, just total employee count figures throughout uh, the craft brewing industry um, and the brewing industry in general, and whether you expect to see a decrease there. I mean. Miller Coors announced, you know, a couple hundred positions and that, that they were uh, yeah. getting rid of and then 150 that they weren't filling. Anheuser-Busch, you know, a mm -hmm. few hundred uh, positions were eliminated a few years ago. And I'm hearing down even at the smallest local level, hey, I'm eliminating these two or three salespeople and putting those money, uh, putting those dollars into marketing. Yeah, you know, it, it may be a, a balancing act. I mean, we're still getting thousand breweries opening this year. So, you know, that total employee number may be, you know, more of a wash, even if there are layoffs. Uh, you know, what we see from our member surveys and government data is it's still growing. Um, but I agree that it's not as universally growing. You know, it used to be no one was laying off, everyone was hiring, and you had total growth. You know, now it's it's more of a realistic market. It's more of a mixed picture. Uh, you know, breweries that are growing and succeeding in the market are still hiring. I think that total number is certainly still going to be higher this year okay. just because that net brewery number is going up so much. And, you know, there are breweries that are still investing in this market that know that if they want to sell as much beer that they probably need more breweries or more employees per barrel to do it. Um, but it's not, it's not universal where everyone's hiring and, you know, that, that job job market tightness that we had, you know, talked about six months or a year ago. I don't, I think that's starting to go away. Yeah. Um, now you mentioned brewery closures mm -hmm. as uh, a contributor to some of that. Mm -hmm. um, we obviously saw that number tick up, I think like 70% last mm -hmm. year. And we were emailing last month. You expect that the brewery closure figure to accelerate even more this year. Um, about a thousand breweries you expect will open. How many do you expect will close? You know, we'll, we'll see, but I think it could be two to three hundred. Um, okay. And, you know, it's certainly going up just as a natural part of this cycle. Some of that is that you typically see closures three to four years after openings. And we're now at that point where that boom that started, you know, 2012, 2013, I mean, those breweries are three, four, five years old. Um, and, and that's when a lot of brewers decide, you know, this just isn't working the way I thought it was, and, you know, it, it's time to get out. Or they run um, out of money. Yeah, they run out of money, exactly. That cash flow hasn't been what they need to, to keep up those debt payments. So um, I think it's going to go up, and some of that, I mean, I've said this many times. I'm still shocked how low the closure rate is. Yeah. And if we see 300 closures this year in a tough market with 7,000 breweries, that's still shockingly low to me. Um, and, and so I try to get people to redo their expectations around what that closure rate looks like in a more mature marketplace, that four or 500 closures in a couple of years is probably what we're going to see. But when you look at it compared to brewery openings, uh, if you look at sort of the ratio last year, it's like, you know, six breweries opening mm -hmm. to every one that closes. And now it seems like we're getting to a point where it could be only about three breweries opening to every one that closes. 
And do you expect it to accelerate even more from there in future years, well, or will it? When, when do the lines yeah. cross? It, that's hard to know. I mean, it's hard to forecast that. You know, when are we going to get to one to one? But I mean, that's when. I, and maybe we'll never get to one to one. Maybe it'll always slightly grow with population. But I mean, that's what a mature market looks like. You know, in restaurants, nobody freaks out about restaurants closing because they know a similar number are opening and they understand the competitiveness of that marketplace. And right. seventy-five percent of the breweries in the country make less than a thousand barrels. Most of the closings we're talking about are in that long tail. They're small breweries, and you know, I think we're going to slowly see that gap between openings and closings close over time. Um, you know, it's possible we'll see something briefly like we did in the late '90s, early 2000s, where closings goes up a little bit more. But then kind of resettles. Um, I think we're still a few years out on that. There's clearly still a lot of local demand in, in markets that haven't been as, you know, that aren't San Diego, that aren't Portland. Um, but, you know, we're moving toward an era where it's going to be more one-to-one. -one. Is that 10,000 breweries? Is that 15,000 breweries? I don't know, but, but it's going to happen. Okay, uh, a few more topics that I want to hit yeah. in the last like three or four minutes that we got. Yeah. I know this is like we're racing through this stuff. Um, Firing away. One of your slides that I, I that mm -hmm. Justin sent me, you had uh, it indicated that there are four million barrels of high end growth out there. Uh, how do you how do you slice that four million barrels up? Who gets that four million barrels? It's a great question, and you know it varies year to year. And so I like just setting this up as just a kind of a thought experiment about you know how realistic it is that everyone grows or or not everyone grows in this case. And four million is about what we've seen typically in the last few years. Some years it's been a little bit higher. Some years it's been a little bit lower. But you know right now imports are taking about two million of that. Um, you know, they're 5.5% year to date, a little bit more than 30 million barrels, so they might be a little bit below that. Uh, we're seeing, you know, premium plus brands from large brewers take at least a half million. Um, that's probably going to be higher this year. Michelob Ultra is on fire. They're yep. getting a lot of growth there. So, you know, you're maybe at 2.5 million between imports and those and that kind of lager, light lager. Um, you know, that means you got a million and a half less for crafts. The large brewers, you know, are taking about a half million barrels a year now with their acquired brands. Once you're adding up all the things, it wouldn't be NBA crafts. Um, so you got a, you got a million barrels left or maybe a little bit less. Um, you for know, almost 7,000 breweries Yeah, to for split. almost 7,000 breweries. And, you know, we talked about the regionals a little bit, but the micros are still growing at 20, 25% a year. And so that's a million barrels right there. And, and that's where you get to that regional equation, particularly for the top 50, where some are up, some are down, but collectively they, they look pretty static. Yeah. So the pie is changing. Mm -hmm. um, now, you're familiar with Bump Williams, I mm -hmm. know. Yep. Uh, he was just recently at the Meeting of the Malts event in Pennsylvania, and he predicts uh, about a decade of declines ahead of us in the beer industry. Uh, your rebuttal? Um, well, you know, or do you on, agree? It depends on what part of the beer industry you're looking at. Um, you know, in volume, maybe. Um, and you know, I, I showed some of the data in my presentation around price. I mean, beer has taken on more price than wine and spirits and off-premise for a decade. Um, until that changes, I mean, I don't see why we would expect anything different on the volume terms. And, you know, AB and Miller Coors have become more profitable than ever before during that time period. So do they have an incentive to change? You know, maybe not. Um, you know, I think we still see a lot of vibrant parts of the beer industry. Imports are doing great. Crafts, you know, obviously a little bit more mixed, but it's still growing. It's still bringing new people into the category. So I wouldn't disagree that we might have a decade of, of slow volume declines, at least in per capita terms. I mean, the population still grows. Um, but that doesn't mean that the beer industry is dead in any way. Now, is that going to be the result of people switching to wine and spirits and moving more towards cannabis or something else? I, I'm not a believer that cannabis has had any effect in the short term. Okay. Um, in the long run, it could. Uh, you know, and I'm not saying that cannabis won't matter, um, but we don't we don't see that at all. When you look at it state by state, the states with legalized cannabis have the best beer trends. Hmm. The states with the worst beer trends are the ones with no legal cannabis. Um, you know, we we started surveying. Is that because the people doing the numbers have been hit, hitting too much of their vape pens, or yeah, you, you never you never know? Yeah, you never want to you know tr trust the fact checkers in those cannabis states. But um, you know, I think some of it is is too that there's there's more. We always think about what's going out. We never think of what's coming in. Right. We've started surveying on this, and, and craft drinkers, there's as many who say, I'm drinking more beer because I'm doing less cannabis than vice versa. Okay. Um, and so I, there is a balance there, and, and legalization also brings price drops. It means more money in people's pockets, and maybe they'll spend some of that money on beer. So it's a long game. It's something that's going to play out over decades. Um, but in the short term, I don't, I don't think it's a big deal. Interesting. Okay, one final question for you be Great. before we bring on our next guest. Yeah. Um, tap rooms, direct to consumer mm -hmm. sales, you know, beer out the front door of a brewery. Yep. It's it's a huge trend. Uh, where do you see that volume wise uh, being this year? Where do you see that landing? How much be uh, beer do we expect to be sold directly to consumers from breweries? Yep. And long term, how much of that pie will go direct? 
Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think we're, we're certainly going to see 3 million barrels directly from breweries this year. Um, you know, how much higher than that, it's a little hard to know. Those numbers are the hardest to crunch until you start getting those state reports and can really dig into it. Um, how big it can get is really a consumer question. You Could know, it be 10% of overall? If, if that's what beer drinkers want, I mean, 10% is hard because it's almost all on-premise. And I still don't think that package to go sale piece is that big. Okay. Um, I think there's a couple hundred thousand barrels there, but that's not, that's not how most consumers want to buy their beer. They still want to go to a supermarket, a convenience store. Um, so, I mean, 10% would mean all of the draft beer in the country, you know, drafts about 11% of, of beer volume is going through. And that's not going to happen. People okay. still want to go to bars. They still want to go to restaurants. So, but, you know, is 3%, 4%, is a third of draft volume going through breweries? Maybe. I don't know. Interesting. We'll, well, that'll be a fun one to watch. Yeah, wonderful. Bart, thank you for your time. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Enjoy yeah. the rest of the show. Wonderful.